All right, I'm going to make a couple of Wahoo boards. This is some walnut that came off of, I believe, the Assemblies of God Missions uh, property up in Springfield, Missouri. Anyway, I cut these about two years ago this month and re them down, so they've been dry, air drying for about two years. And uh, this board here is just, you know, it's pretty much sapwood, and there's not a whole lot there, so I don't won't use it even as crooked as a hind leg. So what I'm doing, and these are split, um, they're about an inch, inch, and this one's maybe an inch and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is cut out the the bark. Again, these were logs when I started with them, and then I resawed them in with a bandsaw, cut them into the links here. They haven't been plain jointed or anything to them. So this is just uh, from the get go, and this is will probably be made for a Wahoo board. Or two Wahoo boards for uh, one of the guys and Rangers been serving Rangers all his life, and uh, just want to be a blessing. All right, the next thing we need to do is get the joiner out, hook up the dust collection, the power, set it up to about a well, one eighth inch cut, and uh, we're going to trim the edges off. Now, these edges are rough; they're not straight lined at all. They've got a pretty good uh, clip to them. I generally go for the one that's got a little bow in the middle and then I'll trim them off. Um, for example, these have already been hit and I got a nice straight edge down here on both these boards. And all I've done is run them across the joiner about eight or nine, ten times and then it, it'll cut them down to get down to get this off of there. And that's what I'm going to get ready to do right now. All right, on this board I've probably run it about eight or nine times. I've got a straight edge between the point here to there, but I've got this part in here. I'm not going to go ahead and run it uh, another eight or ten times on this. I'm going to uh, put it up against the table saw and rip that and then join it. And that way I don't have to sit there and just keep running it. I'll run it over to the, to the table saw and have it clean up. As long as I have a good straight edge on the initial cut, sometimes you can use a skill saw to cut this down to a straight cut. And that's what we're doing. All right, that one long board, I went ahead and cut it in half. It was a, about four feet long like this and had a pretty good uh, warp in it. At the time I straightened that up, I'd be down to about, you know, two inches or inch less than this. So what I did is I cut it down. And uh, the board doesn't have a lot of wood left in it. But yet I'm going to um, try and at least set, salvage some of it. And, there, and what I've done is I've cut it down to a two foot length and that'll be easier to joint and get more wood out of that way. All right, now that I've done the joining, I'm gonna go down to resawing again or ripping, ripping mainly. And I'm gonna take the dust collection off of the joiner port, bring it over here and hook it up to the port on the table saw. And these are just a light fit. But if you don't keep that up and you've got dust collection on it, it'll clog up. So. Um, I just use that dust collection as I see fit, and it does a pretty good job. Um, joining all them boards, and that's all I have left on the for the mess there. So let's go to ripping now. Okay, on ripping this board, I just took off a good chunk of this one here, and uh, of course I had jointed the edge out here with the with the white wood. Then I had this crack that was right here, so I cut on the good side here to give me a good board, and then I have a crack that's here so I'm going to try and salvage this board but I'm going to use it that good straight line to straight line this edge since it's rough sawn so that's what the next thing that I'm getting ready to do and I'll move the fence over and again that's a pretty crooked deal it's got a quarter inch of uh, slice in it so instead of jointing all that I'm just going to use the resaw table or the, the rip table and cut there on that let's get started all right this particular board, I've resawed this edge. It's got a little crack in it right here, and it, this will be waste for about a thickness of a finger. And I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, straight edge now to bring up the rough sawn edge to square, and then I'll probably come back and cut this off so that we'll get a good board out of the middle of it. All right, in this particular case, uh, of course, I've got my straight line, and I'm cutting this part off, get rid of a good chunk of it. It's mainly sap wood and uh, the bark. And it's just cutting right next to the bark so that I'll have no bark on the board. 
and a little bit of white wood, a little sap wood. And that's how I'm getting that back to that point. All right, that's the price of wood these days. Um, this is walnut, and it's pretty expensive stuff. So I don't really waste too much. So this piece right here would be a, be a piece of trash. It's gonna go in a fire pit. And then that little piece there is quarter inch. Um, for the biggest part, it's pretty good, except for about a foot of it. And, uh, but that's saving. So I'll put that up in my Dow uh, Possibles box. And what I'll do is I'll take this material here, square it up, and I'll run it to where it's square. And like this piece here, I'll cut out the middle of it. But that'll give me future stock material. And this piece here is still in good shape. I mean, you go buy, that's a $3 piece of, of, of a walnut dowel right there if you want to buy that so I don't throw too much away with the hardwoods I just I'll keep using it and recycle it down to something else that's uh, usable all right out of those four five boards that I cut over there they're over there this is just the scrap that goes into the fire pit and I'll just use it for firewood but there's not a lot there and uh, the rest of it is being reused for dowels and then uh, cut out the bad spots in here and I'm getting ready to uh, get them down to size and I'll plane them for the size of boards and then I'll glue them together these are my dowel stock for like when I'm wanting to cut dowels up and uh, basically I'm going to joint them on one edge and then get them ready to go and that'll make dowel stock while I was over looking at my scrap band this is a mug uh, thermos mug kit that I did and I like that there's some dowel stock right there and uh, so I pulled it out of the scrap bin and I'm going to cut them down for dowels at the same time all right further requirement of the scrap for the dowels left me with this little bit of a scrap I'll fix one hand and taking that to the dumpster all right all these boards have been cut to their best length and squared on the edges they're parallel and now I need to joint one surface so that when we run it through the planer, they'll be all nice and clean and it'll take a little less setup. Could run these through the planer many times, but it generally will end up with a thinner board. So just to be safe, I'm going to plane them on one surface and that will be ready for the thickness planer. All right, I've got all my boards uh, straight line and jointed on one surface and jointed on the other surface. And they're getting close being surfaced and then I'll join them one more time bring the other edge up I've got all of the surface edges up so when I'm planing all of these edges will all be the same running through the thickness planer and uh, that so there you are one that's not thickness plane and there's one that's jointed and uh, they're just they're just some beautiful wood got a few little defects in it but uh, I like those little defects myself give a character of the wood and these two boards here a little bit then I'll probably sort these before I run them to the planer by thickness because they are a little bit random and uh, so there you go all right after a little bit of work I've got all of my edges uh, jointed everything is jointed uh, except for one face it's still rough rough and uh, there's the surface the rest of the edges have all been jointed and uh, I will finish off with planing and then uh, I, um, I may need to hit it with a jointer just a little bit uh, one more touch when I'm gluing up if I get any edges that aren't quite right but anyway everything's parallel now and uh, the thickness planer will will bring them all to the same thickness with exception of a couple of these thin boards I'm just doing them while I'm doing the batch all right I sorted these with uh, by thickness up to an inch, seven eighths, three quarters, and then we're three quarters shy, and then we got down here to the, the left. So um, all the good faces are up, so I'll have to turn them over one time, and uh, we'll run them through. I'm gonna set my planer to one inch, and we'll run those through and work our way down. This planer has got uh, a dust port on it, um, and that port goes out to a dumpster that just has uh, basically a little T with a vent bag goes out and it distributes it and it drops most of the stuff and then the excess air comes out this was one of the planers that doesn't really require dust collection uh, system hooked up to it it has its own dust collection with an impeller in it it works great for hardwoods pine and fir a little sticky it'll clog up on you so 
just be aware of that and let's get started all right just going taking the boards that i've got ended up oh shy of a board or two and i didn't need another one i've made about eight wahoo boards so went ahead and fixed up a little extra stock there over there on that other table these are the stock that'll make this this board up i'm looking at the glue joints and uh, putting the little white wood in there so it kind of give it a stripe whenever that stone stain hits it it'll really lighten up and uh, uh it'll be very contrasting almost like a zebra board effect and uh they come out really pretty that way anyway that's ready for that i'm going to get the bar clamps out and do a glue up okay just out of these little clamp clip on things these have always been a pain in the neck they've always uh, fallen over or did whatever and uh i saw these and i thought you know what that might be the answer so anyway i'm using them now it's the second time i blew something up with them and i like them keeps the, the clamps off of the table so you can adjust them and turn around they're not falling over anyway i've drawn pencil marks for line up on the joints and uh pretty well squared it up and then uh, my first one they weren't quite square so my second set of pencils will, will square them up anyway they're ready to go i'm going to turn them on edge and glue them up all right it's not a hot day so i got plenty of time but anyway so i've turned them all on edge they all lay down flat that way all i gotta do is spread the glue and then i'll clamp them up once i get started getting gluing then i probably will you'll see me when i get it back together i do have a wet rag that i use to wipe off uh, any any drips and let's get to it all right i've spread the glue now i'm going to turn them over and glue them up the end board doesn't get any glue on it because they all rotate to them and uh, let's get her done again it's not a hot day so i got plenty of time all right i just gently put enough pressure to kind of keep them in lined up the glue squeezed out the top you can see just a little bit left and then i took my wet rag and just wiped over it my glue lines are pretty well lined up i'm square with this end and uh basically i'll put a little bit more pressure and then i'll put the top one on and then i'll turn it over and wipe the bottom side okay planter does a pretty good job and when i'm gluing uh, if i get any edges that aren't quite lined up i'll use this to bring them up loosening this clamp and that clamp until they come up square and parallel with each other and then um, it gets pretty good to where you just don't hardly have any you'll just barely need to send it like this one here there's a slight edge that uh it's not very much and uh that'll sand off besides that it'll get cut off with the with the uh the uh cnc so i could bring that up flush and i probably do that right now all right when i had this one lined up then i moved my clamp over to this side and when i loosened up this one popped back into where it was at i mean this is 64th of an inch but i just thought well i'll go for it so basically I, then i used two clamps to hold it and then apply my pressure down here and here to hold it now i can take the clamps off and we'll be ready to go now some people just love to scrape glue me i don't really care to do that i'll generally just wipe it and uh with a wet rag and get it off there and then very minimal sanding after that some people let that get a little bit tacky and or it'll just semi dry in about 30 minutes and scrape it off but uh i'll just hit it with a wet rag all right well that was uh, a pleasant glue up and a little bit of light sanding on that thing with a belt sander and it'll be ready to put in the cnc machine this would be nice to have a table sander machine that uh, sands but i can hit it with a belt sander and clean it up pretty quick so there you go uh, these things were nice um, i will say that i enjoyed using this but it's generally a fight this wasn't a fight <clears throat> These allow this to turn and not to interfere with the table so your clamp is a whole lot more portable than whenever all your wood's sitting on it so it's uh it's just made for a lot more pleasant of a glue up job so there it is and she's square and ready to go little tip uh, i went to the farm and home and got a little bitty rabbit feeder and all this is, is just a nipple that they put on to feed little animals uh, lamb feeder i guess it is and it comes with the lid and that thing there and basically all i did is took it home and used the glue bottle drilled it out stuck that in there put a little bit bigger hole and that re stays flexible i just put a piece of masking tape over it and it's easy to just to pop it loose you squeeze it and break the glue off of it and it's a whole lot more uh, friendlier than just a standard hard 
glue tip, but that's just silicone. Glue doesn't stick to it, and there it is. Yeah, uh, I forgot to tell you that I just cover it with a piece of masking tape, and it, it's easy, it's cheap, and uh, I, I've had the glue bots, and they get all gunked up. This is the cleanest uh, method right here that I've found. All right, picking back up on the Wahoo board. I just did the V-carve, uh, looked it over and saw what I was needing to do. I'm going to flatten this board um, with a band, with a belt sander and the orbital sander. And I'll hit it on both sides just a little bit. Doesn't need a whole lot, just a little bit. And get rid of the pencil marks. And we'll do that now. Well, I've got this thing down. Belt sander's on it. Pretty much can't, I can barely tell where the glue joints are just by my finger. So now I'm going to go over it with some uh, 60 grit uh, orbital action. Get it down just a little bit smoother and then I'll go to the finish. Okay, after sanding it, picked up my best face up top. I went from I squared across the back side, run a square across there, then I went from corner to corner to come up with this center point right here. I've zeroed my saw, my blade into that, put a screw in this corner, and one of these new cam clamps in that corner, screw in that corner, screw in that corner, and we're ready to load up the program, load it up in the USB device, and I've got to tell it to run its thing. I've zeroed the bit so it knows how high the top of the work surface is. And we're ready to roll. Okay, we're ready to hit it. Turn on the old shop dust collector up there. And that's uh, just the old dust deputy over there. And it's basically sucking this air from here up over the top of the table and then the other side out. And we're ready to run the program. And here we go. About 11 minutes it's cut all the holes out I'm just kind of looking at them make sure they all look good and it does looks like it take a little light sanding we're gonna go ahead and do the outside uh, cut and the outside bevel all right loaded up a 90 degree V bit and I've set the height on it it's gonna go around and uh, bevel the outside edge and then we'll cut it with a quarter around here in a little bit Basically, all it's doing is just cutting a little degree all the way around the outside edge of it. And it does such a nice job when it's doing that. Um, this dust collection is taking all the dust, it's basically keeping it out of the shop, keeping it inside the box. And it's going around that little cut that and then uh, once it's done with that we'll put the uh, end mill back in it and it'll cut on the outside of that and we'll be good to go all right there's the dust that's created so far getting ready to cut it out it's done it's a v-groove cut out the edge now we'll go around it with uh, and cut the, the board out and um, we should be good to go Look in there and see how she's doing. She's going around there and she's down, probably maybe got an eighth inch more or so to cut. Coming around the book bend there, and as it comes around this corner up here, you'll see just how far down it's going. Probably each cut about a quarter of an eighth of an inch, um, probably a hair more than that. So now it's cutting on the outside of that V chamfer bit. And when it gets down low enough, it'll leave a couple of tabs in there to keep the center of this so that it doesn't cut it all the way out, so that it'll stay in there and not move around. And when it gets done doing that, look down here, it says that it's 41% uh, done, so it's going to go around a few more times. All 
All right. Well, I'm going to put four emblems and some names on here, but uh, when you're engraving, it's kind of hard to tell what you're going to get sometimes. So I took this piece of sacrificial foam board that I had. I'm going to engrave in it just a well the depth of it, so it won't go all the way through. It'll just basically carve the emblems and stuff, and we'll see what it looks like, and that'll give me an idea whether or not what I'm doing is right. And in gaming, it's kind of them things like, ugh. So here we go. carved on it and I've got it sanded with the 60 grit 120 grit 220 grit and I went over all the edges and the sides so it's pretty smooth um, the emblems and the carving this board has just a hair warp in it and it's just enough to where this down here is the deepest carve and this one over here is the lightest carb. And I ended up recarving this one because it was all virtually nothing there. So I'm going to tell uh, Bob and Diane that this board represents their life in Royal Rangers where they're heavily involved, more so than most people, that they were still there doing it and then in, into retirement years because I'm now starting to see the retirements and still get a hard after Royal Rangers. So I'm getting ready to put a clear coat over this thing and then I'll paint the colors and it's come out really pretty. Anyway, it's Robert and Diane Cedarwall. They were married August 24th, 1968. And there you have it. This is the exciting part when you put in a clear coat over the top of it. The colors just jump out and it makes it go wow. And I'm using a semi-gloss clear two times the cover, ultra cover by Rust-Oleum, some gloss clear, and I like this stuff, it does a pretty good job of covering. All right, got the coat on the back side, it dried for about 20 minutes, turned it over, and shot a first coat on the top side, and uh, got a good nice covering. I'm using, again, the semi-gloss clear Rust-Oleum upload cover, and uh, seem to have good luck with that. All right, I've taken uh, my acrylic paints from Walmart. They're about a dollar a piece. And this is the third or fourth Wahoo barrel I've made with them, or Wahoo board. And I just put a little bit down in the center and slosh it around with one of these Harbor Freight brushes. And then I'll put a clear coat to seal it up after it dries. And there it is. Uh, it came out pretty good couple of little things that are wrong with it but hey it's homemade so that's what makes it uh, unique
Wait. Just don't look this way until you get over here. Okay. Now, now look. Oh my goodness. That is beautiful. Wow. Oh, hi. That is beautiful, beautiful. Is it dry? No, not yet. Is the wood dry? The wood's dry, just the holes are wet. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. All right, we are making a set of four dice. And the four dice is going to be complemented with this box. Uh, I did not print these marbles. I had ordered a pack of like five sets, and I used one set for mine. These are just a plastic cheapo marble. But anyway, I did make the box, and the dice will set in there. And um, other than putting clear coat over it, we're just about done.